Good morning, Chris Whelan here from the Center of Business Excellence, Building Better Businesses. I want to talk to you today about something that actually came up in one of my sessions last week with a, with a client. And he turned around to me and said, Chris, how do I get people, how do I get my team just to do what they're supposed to do, just to do their jobs? He was so frustrated. And the key thing really in that situation is that the team just wasn't getting to doing what they were supposed to be doing. They weren't actually, well, he felt that they weren't doing what they were supposed to be doing. They were very busy, right? No question of it. Very, very busy, but not, not dramatically productive. So that was the first point. The, what he was finding is he was doing a lot of rework, and that was hitting his profit, right? So you do a lot of work during the month, come to the end of the month, not getting the results that he wanted, not getting the profit that he expected. And when he went back and looked at it, it was because they were having to do a lot, having to do a lot of rework. So that was certainly really frustrating to him. And to some extent, he, he used the metaphor, he's like, it was like he was pushing water up a hill. It was just too hard. He was having to engage people, but every morning he'd come to work and he was pretty much, he, he as the owner was demotivated because he had to engage with people and please do this rather than actually the team coming in and just doing their own thing. And what we discussed was, you know, how much of that was him allowing the bad behavior, um, which can, of course, then become quite extreme. People can become quite aggressive in some situations, and I'll talk about that in a moment. Um, but really, de he was demotivated. Uh, this felt like some of the other staff were checking out because the team, the teams, not all of them, but some of the teams weren't doing their work properly. So some of the other staff were checking out because they, you know, they see someone else doing something bad, they do it themselves. And ultimately, his customers were suffering because the rework that I mentioned a moment ago also was leading to you know customer dissatisfaction. So a lot of things that were negative there: demotivated staff, customers checking out. Uh, sorry. Team, other members, team members checking out customer motivation suffering, and him as the business owner really feeling like he's pushing water up a hill. Really an unpleasant situation. Um, and so all of those things came uh, came up in the conversation last week, and, and I wanted to talk to you today about that because it doesn't have to be that way, right? It doesn't have to be that when you say to your team, hey, listen, your shift is from 7 in the morning until 4 in the afternoon, and from 2.30 you can't find them because they just don't come back to the yard because they don't want to get another job. It doesn't have to be that when you say to someone, please go out to the site and do this, um, Mrs. Jones or Mr. Jones needs A, B, and C, and you get there and it's not been done. It doesn't have to be that way. And I want to talk to you about how we can improve that. So those things are, are, are massively important. There's a few areas, and it's what I call the, um, if you like, the keys to a winning team. Right? How do you build that culture so that your team does do what they're supposed to do? How do you build that? And it starts, absolutely, it starts with leadership tone at the top. Right? You have to do that first. So Absolutely, that's the first thing. And that leadership tone that you set as the business owner, that's number one. Number two, you want common goals. You want common goals for all of your team. They won't all have the same goals, but you want common goals. So imagine a rugby team. Common goal is to win the game, right? The fullback and the fly half don't have the same goal every time. The coach doesn't have the same goal, but the common goal is to win the, win the game. So one, set the leadership tone. Two, have common goals. Three, make sure that the rules of the game are clear and well understood by everyone. Right? They know what's allowed, they know what's not allowed. Then within that, you encourage, and this is number four, to have a clear action plan of how to achieve those goals that you've set. Right? One, leadership tone. Two, common goals. Three, uh, very clear rules of the game. Four, have a clear action plan. Five, and this is critical, encourage risk-taking. Allow your team to do things within the frameworks that you've set. Encourage them to take the risks. And then number six, have very, very clear 100% um, participation. Everyone in the team participates. You can't have 15 players or modern rugby game. You can't have 23 players when only three of them are taking part. You've got to have everyone 100% participating, right? One, leadership. Two, common goals. Three, action plan. Sorry, rules of the game. Four, action plan. Five, risk taking. And six, 100% participation. And here's the bonus thing. Make sure that with all of those things are wrapped up in a values-based system. When your values are strong, when your character of your team is strong, then you can go forward together. Then you can get a high-performing team, a motivated, focused team. Then you can get the, the customer satisfaction that drives out of it. All those negative things you spoke about, they get pushed out the way, and the team does what you take. And for the business owner, you're no longer pushing water up a hill. You're coming to work motivated. You're coming to work saying, wow, the team's doing stuff. We're productive. We're making the money. We can pay better salaries. You can, you know, we can do all of the things that we know we want to do because you've got your team functioning, functioning right. If this resonates with you, if this is something that you want to explore in your business, I would be absolutely thrilled to offer you a complimentary 60 to 90 minute, what I call a strategy session, a discovery session. You go ahead, you can see in the 
either in the blurb below or on the link. You can jump into my calendar. You can book it directly yourself. It's not a sales call, right? I'm telling you now, it's not a sales call. It's totally focused on you. We'll do three things. One, we'll ask lots of questions and we'll understand your situation specifically. Well, that's the first thing. I understand your situation. The second thing is we will make sure that we get to the root causes of what the challenges are, right? We'll get clarity on the root causes. And then the third thing is we'll put solutions in place. So 60 to 90 minutes, three things you get out of it, great ideas, and you can go forward and use them. If that works for you, jump onto my calendar, make sure you book the link now, and I'll chat with you soon. All the very best. Have a good week. Bye-bye.